like Charles Joel Dan versus Nathaniel Wood last week in a featherweight, you're absolutely going to love a possible fight of the night between me and Hakeem Dawadu taking on Juicy J, Julian Arosa, in a big time fight. I mean, you look at it for both of these guys. For Hakeem Dawadu, really inactivities plagued his last number of years, and he's picked it up here recently, especially with his last win over Mike Trezano. He really did look good in that matchup with the striking, mixing it up to all three levels. Taking on Julian Arosa, who both of these guys, respective five on ins, they're both four and one. And for Arosa, his five on in is his third UFC stint. And wild. Stint number one, not the best. A little bit 50 50. Stint number two, not very good. Stint number three, four and one. And if we look at it and break it down, he does have two finished wins there one over Sean Woodson, one over Nate Landwehr, really quick. He loses to Sung Woo Choi. He beats Charles Jolden. And then he beats uh, Steven Peterson his last time out. Split decision win for Arosa. Go back and watch that fight. You have time. You can do it unless you're cramming and you're watching this right before Dawudu and uh, Arosa fight. That was a fight of the year contender Incredible. between a couple of unranked guys. And for Julian Arosa, really did look good. In the third round, both guys bloodied up. It was like Lawler McDonald. It really was. Like, it was crazy the pace that those guys pushed. But, Matt, for Julian Rosa, this guy really has turned his career around. He He's been billed forever out of uh, Yakima, Washington, but moved his training in this third stint down to Extreme Couture. And it has paid immediate dividends to his style. It definitely has. He's someone who really likes to weaponize his pace and his cardio in a fight. And I feel like the move to Extreme Couture has helped him accentuate that part of his game. Because when he is able to absorb those early shots and kind of make it past an early flurry, he becomes a very difficult fighter to deal with. He's a great submission artist. If you do get him into any position where you're going for a takedown and it's not 100% great technique, he can get you with a guillotine. He can get you with a darts. He's a very tricky fighter in that aspect. He has great volume striking in his own right. And he has deceptive power too. I don't think he's the most heavy-handed guy in the world by any means, but his shots do damage, and you can tell by the faces of his opponents in the majority of his fights. The problem is, and it's with every Julian Arosa fight, how hard does his opponent hit, and how big of a flurry do they bring, especially early on in a fight? And with Hakeem Dawadu, he does fight in a similar manner to a guy like Charles Jolday. He's going to throw the kick. He's going to work in combinations. The difference is, I don't think Hakeem Dawadu is going to fall off a cliff in the third round, similar to what Jolday did in that fight. And I know that's a weird thing to say. Okay, I guess with his last performance fresh in our minds, we probably don't think of Jolday as a big guy who's going to rally in the third round. But normally he has been able to do that in his UFC career. But against Julian Arosa, the pace really got to him. The jab really got to him. The damage started to get to him. So, Julian Rosa was able to overtake him as that fight progressed. The difference is, I think Akeem Dawadu is a much more disciplined fighter with his approach. I think he's someone who, if he hurts Julian Rosa, he's not just going to blow out his tank trying to finish him. He's going to be a lot more disciplined, like I would said. And the thing I do like about Hakeem Dawadu is, he's going to use the leg kick a lot in this fight, I think. Julian Rosa is very heavy on that lead foot. He's someone who requires a lot of his boxing style. He's not going to throw a lot of kicks. So, if Akeem Dawadu is able to damage that front leg, enough. I don't think Arosa is going to be his normal explosive self in that third round, and I really think it's going to even the battlefield as this fight continues, because if Akeem Dawadu has a great first round, you're still going to worry about him in the second and third round, but the difference is, if he goes to the body with that left hook, if he throws the leg kick, those are going to even it out, and it's going to take away Julian Arosa's biggest advantage. Well, if you look at it for Dawadu, I mean, coming in, he was a super prospect at a World Series, and then he loses to Danny Henry really quickly by submission, so picking up the pieces, you look at his last loss, this one for Dawadu, lose to Mavzar Evlev and struggles in the grappling like everybody else does. So I, I don't really kind of take that one against him, but I will say this. Against a guy like Julian Arosa, who can mix it up with his own takedowns, he was able to get some against Peterson, he was able to get some against Charles Jordan. He can make it tricky that way and make you think about what you're doing, but I do like that. I mean, for Dawudu, very efficient striker. He does like to hit all three levels. He will work his... his uh, his punches to the body, and he will throw kicks oh, yeah. as well. His leg kicks are some of the best that you're going to see in the featherweight division, and he doesn't fall off a cliff. And if you do look at it for Hakeem Dawudu against one of the bigger guys in the featherweight division that pushes a big heavy pressure with his boxing against Mike Trezano, I mean, just in terms of the number, three thirty twenty sevens by all three judges' accounts, but... 141 to 70 were the significant strikes in that one with 29 leg kicks for Dawudu. That just goes to show how well he can do against a tactician that's in some respects similar to a guy like Julian Rosa. Big, tall, 
forward pressure boxing, and Dawoodu passed that test last time. And I think it was important for him to put up big volume numbers in that fight, because up until that point, the problem with Hakeem Dawoodu is, it looks very good, the technique, but he doesn't always throw the most output behind his shots. He'll throw that one nice combo, and then he'll kind of wait. He'll kind of wait. And the problem is, it's going to look good when he lands, but unless he is able to get significant knockdowns or cause real damage, it's really hard to score rounds in his favor if he is only landing five, six, seven clean shots and just being sound defensively. So I think there's a world out there where Julian Arosa can really get ahead with some of his volume numbers and put a pace on Akeem Dawadu that he's not really used to. The only problem is if Arosa does utilize that kind of a tactic, I think it's going to put him in the line of fire for a lot of the power shots of Hakeem Dawadu. And I know Akeem hasn't shown the highest level of power in the UFC up until this point. I say he has more knockdowns down power than knockout power. I think Julian Ross is kind of meeting him halfway with some of that forward movement. It's just going to improve the already decent hand speed and power of Akeem Dawadu, but I do think this has more than enough potential to become a fight of the night by the time it's all said and done. I'll mention the odds in the topology votes, and I'll give you my pick here, and, and I do have quite a bit of reasoning here. So Dawadu open minus 190, minus 232 average on best fight odds. For Rosa, open plus 165, plus 185 are their votes. We have a look at the topology votes, Matt. Surprise to us there to you. I'm going to say over under 80% Dawadu. I think they'll be under. I think they're going to be under. Right on. 711 total votes, 80% Dawadu, 68% by decision, 25% by knockout for the 20% that I have a Rosa, 43% by decision, 40% by submission. I have Hakeem Dawadu, and my reasoning is they talk about this in every Julian Arosa fight, and it hasn't gotten him caught in his second stint in the UFC, but it got him caught all the time beforehand. And I don't know how he's gotten better with age, but this is it. He walks forward and comes in with shifty angles. He so does. switch stances in his combinations. I think that'll get him caught. He's heavy on either lead leg because he will switch stances, but he's primarily going to go from one side. He'll get caught to that league leg. It'll compromise some of his movement. The other thing that Arosa does all the time, walk in with his hands down. He, he's a hands down type of fighter. And it's not like, I, t I do this almost every week. I didn't do it last week. These skill fighters that fight with their hands really low, like they're using a brush saw, like Blood Diamond fights that way. There's a lot of kickboxers and Muay Thai artists that for some reason hold their hands low instead of holding them really high. Alistair like, Overeem is the way so I think of. Most Thai fighters. Alistair Overeem is another one. Julian Arosa just straight up holds his fist low down by his sides and then he kind of walks in which helps him throw from odd angles and throw those big power shots so i do like dawadu in those uh you know different in-betweens and maybe Oros is able to get the finish one against dawadu i just don't necessarily see it this weekend for those reasons i have calgary's own uh, champions creed martial arts guy and me and Hakeem Dawadu. Yeah, I can't stress it enough. I think those leg kicks are going to cause havoc on Julian Arosa. He is very heavy on his legs, like we've mentioned. Again, he's not a kicker. He really does utilize his boxing a lot. And people have talked about this with guys like Nate Diaz their whole entire careers. When you're a boxer, you're very heavy on that front leg. And that's the problem. Arosa does utilize his footwork, like you had mentioned. So if that movement does get compromised, I think it's just going to give Hakeem Dawadu an even bigger advantage in the striking department. And that's why I do like Dawadu in this matchup. But I will say this. Even though both guys have had losses at the UFC level, I think it's about time for the winner of this to probably get a ranked opponent. Maybe not an opponent who's currently in the rankings. Maybe someone who's just got out of it. But I think they're starting to inch their way up into that top 15 conversation. Shane Burgos. Oh, no. He's mm. with the PFL. Big time fight coming up this weekend. Both of us going with Canada's own Hakeem Dawadu to get the win. Let us know in the comments section who you have because Julian Rose has got a great opportunity in this fight as well. It takes two to tango. Big time fight coming up next. Oh boy, Kevin Holland taking on Daniel Rodriguez. You're not going to want to miss it. Keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks, we always say. Let's get into it.